everyone, this is Christoph from DataBridge. Today I would like to show you a new trick on dashboards. I'm sure you've seen dashboards like this and let's assume you've done a great job and you came up with some KPI objects and they're counting something. And now the question is, this counts 141 products for example. What are those 141 products? So there is a KPI object that cannot, you know, select the products that it counts. Now, what I'm going to teach you in this tutorial is to turn the KPI into a functional button. Look at this one, and this is standard, by the way, it's no extension needed. Yeah, I click on this and it selects the 141 products. Isn't that cool? And it says 17 of those are, let's say, class two. I click on it and wow, here are the 17. This is what we will do now. So let's start with a dashboard like this. So you already created KPI objects and you have managed to create a formula for it. Here, for example, even with set analysis, it counts the distinct number of products for those who have a classification of two. And the next trick is now to understand that the same formula can also be used in the magnifying glass. That means in the search expression for each field. This formula with an equal sign in front selects the 210 products that it counts. Okay, this is an important understanding which we will reuse next. You just need to create a button. There is a button in the, in the charts and one of the actions that the button can do is search so you add an action and you go search, you search for the search and we paste or we select in the field product ID exactly that formula. But wait a second, the formula needs to be a string now. So I put equal and this will be a string that starts again with an equal. So this is the string I paste as a search expression. So that's the basic trick here. So if I click this button now, it will select those 210 products. Click on it, it gets me the 210 products. It works exactly as we need it. So now uh, it's a good practice to externalize the formula definition for this. So for that purpose, I've created a variable v count class and I put this counter in here. Why we will do that? Because we will use the formula at least twice and you know, never repeat yourself, make this always a principle. That's the formula, not only to make selection, but also the formula it takes to show the number here. Let's now make this button look nice, like a KPI object. Uh, there are a few things to do. First, we will add a title. So I go under appearance, turn on the titles and we will give this the title something like class two products that's easy then the button instead of the label will show the formula and this is the first time i need the formula and here i will go count class and because it's a formula i want to execute it and get the result here shown so this will count the classification. Here it goes with 210. Then you probably don't want a dark blue background, but rather a white background. You probably want to show an icon, just the tag icon. We put a bluish uh, font color here. And now the selection it makes. I said, don't repeat yourself. So we go back here and we put an equal sign and again, we count class variable. And this time I'm not putting a dollar brackets expansion because this time I want the formula and not the result of the formula. I don't want to execute the formula. So that should do the job. Don't repeat yourself. 
the, the number you, you see here is exactly the formula that's fired against the selection and it works just fine. So let's do this once again with a slightly more difficult example. This KPI counts the top 10% priced products. So it uses a fractal function in the back. So again, I just show you what I did here and explain a bit. Um, I've prepared a variable V top 10 broads. The variable V top 10 broads has a formula like this. It says count, then ship with price with a set analysis greater than, and then it puts a dollar brackets equal. That means here it's calculating ad hoc with 0.9 fractal. And there's a little burden you have to take here in the script. If I would put a dollar and open brackets in the script, that part between open brackets and close brackets instantaneously would be calculated or try to be calculated. And this part fails within the script. So I have to tear the dollar and the open bracket apart from each other so that the script runs through. And as a result of a string concatenation with an ampersand, I get this. And if you check now the variable, I just get the result of the concatenated string. I will do the exactly as before. I do have the top 10 products here uh, as the executed formula. So the label shows the counter and in the actions, I will search for a matching search string in the field product ID and I put an equal sign followed by the formula from the script. And also this one works just fine. And this is really cool. I mean, you don't only count them, um, you can instantaneously click on it and see, okay, these are the top products um, of my list. There is one thing missing. I mean, you see this button doesn't exactly look like this one. Um, the secret here is actually something I unleashed already in another video. I created from the visualization bundle a multi KPI object. So what this does among great KPIs, you can put some text here. I used to put here CSS and then you scroll down under appearance and where it says styles, we have to restyle the title here. So we are, so to say, hacking into the CSS of how usually a title looks like. First of all, you want to get out, find out the IDs of the KPI objects. So for that reason, I added it here in the top of my URL slash options slash developer. Then you get this little context menu in edit mode. When you click on developer, just note down this object ID and note down this object ID. And with this together, let's uh, fast forward a little bit. So how the CSS needs to look like is this. Here are the two object IDs that we just noted down. So both of them will get a white background and we have to set it important because the background is already occupied by a definition. So we have to overrule this. Um, the title needs to be 100% and the title text, which is uh, has two classes, needs to be centered and the font weight should be normal. And the last two ones here, those are uh, for hiding the multi KPI object if not in edit mode. So if I put this here into that CSS and you can see it's all in here, then only then you will get uh, the effect that the button looks like a KPI object. If I would remove those, you see it looks like before. So this was it from Ambassador Christoph. Stay tuned and see you in the next video. Thanks.